First, though, uh, money at stake, but also freedom of speech very much in the frame in the wake of Jetstar sacking one of its pilots for raising safety concerns and workplace issues in a newspaper article. The airline saying it stands by its decision that indeed First Officer Joe Eakins not only lied, but fundamentally breached a number of conditions of his employment by going public and linking Jetstar to claims that the aviation industry was at a crossroads roads indeed uh, that the institutions that created our safety industry uh, now have been seen to be under threat and that according to Mr Eakins could only be bad news for all Australians now uh, the Australian Institute International Pilots Association saying it will now take action via Fair Work Australia let's bring in Joy Deep Hoar, managing partner at People and Culture Strategies for some insights into this one because it's quite intriguing uh, and to just put out there as we have Jetstar's response but the claims by this pilot that found their way into print on the actual way that workplace relations are being conducted since the introduction now what of Fair Work Australia yeah there are devices being used I guess that are redolent of you know the bogeyman of work choices. Yeah, that's right. I think um, having having read the the article that uh, this this individual wrote, mm. one of the uh, important paragraphs I think was towards the end of that that article where he said that while people are proclaiming that work choices may be dead, buried, and cremated, as, as Mr. Abbott made a great deal of in the the last yeah. election, the comment was made that. Uh, allegedly what Jetstar is doing is showing that uh, there, there are ways that you can circumvent a lot of the provisions of the new legislation and um, uh, I think in so doing that's, uh, that's certainly whether it's actually happening mm. or not it's cause for concern at well, you're the cold face. I mean is it happening? Is this a widespread instance? I mean we know that loopholes exist for a very good reason so that arguments <coughs> can be raised legitimately often that there are, are, are grounds for following a certain approach does that make it sort of unjust oh, I think the, the Fair Work Act mm -hmm. um, doesn't deliver the uh, outcomes for unions and employees that were promised. I don't think there's any doubt about Principally that. Principally which were what? Well, well I, I think that uh, what the unions were hoping for was that with the introduction of good mm. faith bargaining laws uh, there would be some very tight restrictions around when employers mm. could turn their back on union negotiations mm. and things like that. Mm. That just hasn't hasn't eventuated and right. that's been a reality. Right. A number of agreements that have been made have been uh, pushed back by the tribunal and have in fact been rejected. So mm. the, the legislation is by no means perfect. There are still some of those loopholes that are available for employers to, to, to explore now, um, that, that's not to say that those loopholes should, as a matter of course, be closed, but there is a disconnect, I think, between the perception of the Fair Work Act and what it's set out to achieve and what the reality of what it is achieving actually is. What about the broader issues that have come into play as well? That is to say, somebody with a, a point that they feel hasn't been addressed inside an organisation, whereby there's a broader implication, there are big issues at stake, in this case, public safety, as the claims were um, being made. Yeah. Now, when is that sort of crossing the line? When can you put into a contract something which will silence somebody and, in, in a sense, frustrate a broader theme of free speech? Yeah. What's very interesting for me is that what if someone who is a union delegate um, says exactly the same things as this individual said in his newspaper article but does so in the context of tribunal proceedings? There would actually be legal prohibitions very clearly that would prevent his employer from taking disciplinary action against him for participating in those kinds of industrial proceedings. Now, is the real issue for Jetstar, and I'm not saying that this is without merit, but is the real issue that, that he's gone to print, um, it, it brings into play potential sort of corporate defamation type type things and they haven't been given the opportunity to defend themselves as they would in articulated or ventilated court proceedings. And with those just out of interest on a, even on a broader theme related to that would there be a prohibition not just against that union representative going into print but against any reports on that topic until 
a decision had been reached until the verdict had been handed down for one of us. Well, no, no, there wouldn't. I no. mean, um, the, these matters are all conducted in public. It's only yeah. in exceptional circumstances mm -hmm. that a tribunal will say, well, no, we'll, we'll close the doors to the, the, mm -hmm. the press. I can understand that um, an employer would not like any employee uh, commenting publicly about issues and, and allegations in relation to safety and cost cutting and, and whatever else. Because in that respect, <coughs> what's, what's really fundamentally different? If a journalist is making those claims in print on the, on the case that's playing out, versus one side or the other. I mean, surely that's a, a tactical decision to go uh, public because arguably you're actually shooting yourselves in the foot. Well, and, and it's a well-known tactic in yeah. all forms of litigation for yeah. people to initiate court proceedings mm. to know that they don't actually have to mm. make the adverse comments. Reports of, the, of yes. what's going on will be yeah. enough to, to cause the reputation mm. damage. Mm. Um, but I think in this case, employees need to be very careful about what they do say mm. about their employers. There are confidential uh, confidentiality obligations that employees will have to keep confidential information mm. confidential. Mm. There will also be obligations of good faith that an employee owes to their employer not to... Um, characterise them adversely in, in the public eye. Employees, particularly in this age of social media, um, yeah. that brings into play a, a number of concerns for employers. We've seen a number of high-profile sackings of people for posting things on Twitter. We and, certainly and Facebook. have, uh, close to home. But in, in that regard, what then of the obligations of the employer to then come back and to see headlines where they are saying, this person lied? Uh, that again is an equally bold statement well, and arguably is defamatory unless, I mean the only defence to that is truth. It was, it was the truth. And, and indeed, and while not a defamation law, I think it actually has to go further and it's got to be in the public interest mm. for, for those comments to be made. So now, your, yeah, your advice to employers, yeah, let's just balance it. Yeah, I think yeah. what employers need to do is be very clear and, and a lot mm. of the provisions in their contracts that they think they'll be able to rely on will mm. probably not be strong enough mm. to give them the comfort that they can take the action they want to take and secondly that their employees more fundamentally understand what they can and can't do. Mm. Educate. Because that, su that subsequent response that goes public, mm. often, you know, I guess in an employment situation, how, that's going to, I guess, be fairly uh, weighty in terms of evidence that might go against you. I mean, if you have just shot from the hip yourself, as an employer, yeah, it's, it's been a, a decidedly public response to a, a, a mm. public claim initially. Mm. So none of that helps, and certainly it doesn't mean for um, a likely mm. resolution in the short term. I would have thought. Now there's broader industrial issues at, at play, and uh, I think there could be some interest groups taking an interest. Were these out of interest as well, given that they could take in a whole number of different avenues? So there's not just the employment case running, but you presumably have a, a defamation action running concurrently as well. Or will they all come under the employment banner? I think Can they what, all be dealt with there? What we know at the moment is that the unions are talking about challenging this mm. in, in Fair Work Australia. Mm. There's a couple of avenues within that forum that they could go. Defamation proceedings will take a very long time and will be very expensive. Yeah. Um, this will play out in the industrial forum and the outcome will be fascinating. Come back, won't you, and let's uh, look at it as it develops. For now, thanks very much. Thanks, Carl. Sure. Joy D. Paul there, Managing Partner at People and Culture Strategies. Let's